So if this is your first time viewing us online, we welcome you. Uh, give us a thumbs up or give us some sort of a little emoji or whatever it is you want to do or uh, even put a message that you were blessed by praise and worship. And, and I pray that the word that goes out today, uh, it sets into your heart. And I'm claiming Isaiah 55, 11 over his word that it will not return to him void. So I, I give God praise for what he's doing here. I thank God for, for what he's continuing to do and uh, the many blessings that he's pouring out over our ministry. Um, the, the, just to kind of give a really quick update, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time here, but um, I, I mentioned last week we have located a couple of buildings that we're going to have located here at the, uh, in the parking lot, and it will give us the opportunity to basically take everything that's inside that building and set it up inside those temporary buildings so that we can have service inside a, an enclosed and protected uh, facility while, while the Lord is doing whatever he wants to do with this building and so I'm very thankful for that we're waiting on the appropriate paperwork to be done by the lawyers what all that needs to be done to make it legal and then we will move forward with the transportation process of relocating those buildings to this property and uh, and it will give us a, a, a safe place to uh, set up our equipment and not have to tear it down every single week amen, amen. I'm looking forward to that even though I am enjoying this wonderful weather and it's going to be like in the 40s in the morning I hear us I definitely will be wearing shorts to the office amen okay that's more than y'all need to know amen uh Let's see here. Uh, we got today the, uh, the 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 shoe boxes are due. If if uh, if you have came uh, and picked up some of these boxes, we want you to know that these have to be turned in. We have a deadline. Uh, Dinah is 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 uh, over this part of the ministry, and so wherever she has to take these things, uh, they, they're due by a certain time. But they're due here at this location today. Uh, so if you have not already turned this in, uh, we need to make some sort of arrangements to get them to this location so that Dinah can take care of it on her end and get those things turned in. Amen? So, I'm done with commercials. And I need a Bible because I don't have near as much of it memorized as Frenchie does. So, I have to have a cheat sheet. Amen? I want to let everybody know that we are uh, still in the series called Follow Me. Uh, we've been in this series, this is the 18th Sunday in a row now, where we are in this Follow Me series. Uh, so if you figure up however many months there are in a, or weeks there are in a month, and how many months in a year, I don't even know when we started this thing, back in like June or July. But we started out in Matthew 419, where Jesus was, was calling his disciples, and he says, follow me, and I will show you how to be fishers of men. Well, that's not the the only thing that he showed. I mean, he shows us how to do so many different things in our everyday life, and we can absolutely learn how to live life through the Word of God, and he will speak to you, not just through his Word, but he'll speak into your spirit, he will guide you, he will lead you, and he will teach you how to live uh, everyday life. Amen? Do you agree with that? Amen. Let me ask you a question here, just a real quick poll. How many people are married? Or maybe you're, maybe you're not married, maybe you've been married, and you're not married no more. That's, that's okay, too. That's okay, because uh, what, what about children? Any, anybody here got children? Okay. Amen. Well, how many people know that that's a blessing? Yes. Children are a blessing. Amen? Yes. And, and children can also give you a whirlwind. <laughs> yeah, we, we got some, we, we got, yeah, uh-huh. Okay, well let me just tell you this right here. Whether you're married or you're not married, or maybe you've been married and you got children, either way it goes, it takes commitment. Amen? It requires a certain level of commitment. And this certain level of commitment that I'm talking about, just think about this. If, if you're married or ever been married, uh, when you were dating, it required a certain level of commitment. Like, you had to make sure you brushed your teeth every day. <laughs> Now, now, some people date today without brushing their teeth. I don't know how they go about doing that, but they do it. But uh, it requires a certain level of commitment. You got to get up, you got to put on deodorant every day. I mean, you can't go a day without deodorant. 
because if that significant other one smells the lack of deodorant, it could turn them off and possibly cause them to never return again. <laughs> Yeah, uh, cologne. Cologne is a wonderful thing. It, it masks. It masks odors. And, and so, but it takes a level of commitment to do that on a daily basis, right? But once you have transitioned from that dating stage to that married stage, we go to a different level of commitment. We don't have to worry about brushing our teeth in the morning before you kiss your loved one. Now some of y'all are saying ain't happening. Some of y'all are like, no, 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 no. Ain't nobody kissing me until they put a toothbrush in their mouth. Maybe you need some scope. I don't know. You might need some, some methanol or something to break that stuff down. I don't know. But here's the thing is, is our levels of commitment change. When you get into that, into that married, married stage, what about, what about the children thing? I mean, when you have children, it's like when they're first born, all children are adorable, right? I mean, they're all, they're so precious, they're adorable. Until they start making decisions that change that commitment of their adorable. Like when they start making bad decisions and start making wrong decisions in their life and they end up getting in trouble or doing something that that is not right or maybe it's illegal, that level of commitment does waver a little bit. It doesn't change the fact that you love them. Uh, now, now let me just explain because my children, uh, I've, got, I've got three grown children with, with children of their own and I've got two children at home. And when they do make a bad decision, when they do make the wrong decision, it does not change the fact that I love them. I don't, I don't just all of a sudden just decide to not love them anymore because they made a poor choice. I'm not going to preach on the prodigal son today, but that's a perfect example of, of what I call unconditional love. Unconditional love. It didn't change the father's love for the son just because he got dirty. It doesn't change the, the, the love that he has for his son just because he made a poor choice. I want to make a statement here. No matter what they do, we don't stop loving. Amen. No matter what they do, we don't stop helping. No matter what they do, we have unconditional love. That's the title of today's message, it's unconditional. We have a love that is unconditional. And we have this unconditional love because that is the kind of love that the Father has for us. John 3.16, he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. This is the unconditional love of God. This is the agape love of God. That word agape, it's, it is, it's an unselfish kind of love. It's a love that doesn't try to pick a person apart because of something they did or something they said. It's unconditional love. It's, uh, and let me define what unconditional is so that you can better understand this. The word unconditional is defined in very simple words. Unquestioning. Unconditional is very simply defined as unquestioning. It also means unlimited. Unlimited. Unconditional is also defined as unrestricted. Unrestricted. How much did God love you? It says in Romans 5 8, he says that while we were yet sinners, he loved us, he died for us. He died for us. That's what that means. That's what unconditional love is, is the fact that while we were sinners, He died for us. John 15, 13 says that there is no greater love than for someone to lay down their life for their friend. 
unconditional love. Think about that just for a minute. It's unquestioning. It's unlimited. It's unrestricted. I mean, what if Jesus would have said when he was hanging on the cross, instead of saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, what if he would have said, I'm going to die for only the good people that are in the world, all of those that make bad decisions, all of those that are going to make poor decisions, I'm not dying for them. We don't serve a God that loves like that. No. We serve a God, we serve a God that has unconditional love. We serve a God that has unquestioning, unlimited, and unrestricted love for you and me. Now look, we can get su super theological about this and we can start dragging scriptures out of the Word that say, well, the Word says this and the Word says that. But I am talking about the unconditional love of God that draws a sinner out of the pit of hell and sets them on that straight and narrow to come to Christ in need of a Savior. But you don't know where anybody is at in that state. You don't know what road they're on. You don't know if they've received Christ or if they haven't received Christ. You cannot look at the outward appearance of a person and say, well, that person right there has been serving Christ their whole life. Why are they making these decisions? You don't know if that person has a real relationship with Jesus or just a church membership. And there are sadly a lot of people in this world that have church memberships and not a deep relationship with the Savior. So when we start throwing scriptures at them, start pulling scriptures out and saying, well, why are you doing this and why are you acting this way? We need to get back to the basics and say, do you have a relationship with Jesus? And that begins with me, the preacher. Because I can do things and I can say things. Well, preacher, do you have a deep relationship with Christ? Well, I better. I better. Because if I'm going to stand up here and I'm going to lay those scriptures out before you in order to keep from being a condemning word or a judgmental word, I must walk in that walk, not just talk the talk. So this unconditional love... It, I, I want to go to Luke chapter 6. I, I didn't share a whole lot of scripture last week. I don't think. I can't really remember what I did last week. I've slept since then. But I want to share some scripture with you in Luke chapter 6 verse 35. Jesus said, love your enemies. This is what unconditional love is. He says, love your enemies. How many people here, just really quick, can say, I love my enemies? Yeah, not a whole lot of hands went up. In fact, none. I wonder how many people on the other side of that camera are so righteous that you say you love your enemies no matter what they've done to you, no matter what they've said to you, no matter how judgmental they've been. I'm telling you, folks, this is tough. It, to have unconditional love like Christ, that's tough. That's tough. It, it actually takes a commitment to have unconditional love. Look what he says. He says, love your enemies and do good to them. This is Luke chapter 6, verse 35. Love your enemies, do good to them, lend to them without expecting to be repaid. That sounds just the opposite of the way we live today, isn't it? We want something for something. If we're going to give, we want something in return. If we're going to give, we want to be repaid. He says, love your enemies and do good to them and lend to them without expecting to be repaid. Then your reward from heaven will be very great and you will be acting as children of the Most High. You know, a lot of people say, well, he's talking about money there. What about love? What about, what about loving unconditionally? I'm not going to love because so-and-so hurt me. I'm not going to love unconditionally because I'm not going to get that love back. I'm not going to get a return on my investment of love. He says that when we do this, when we love our enemies, when we do good to them, when we lend to them, expecting nothing in return. So love, expecting nothing in return. Love, not expecting love back. It is natural that we would love expecting love in return. 
I, I mean, I love my wife, and I expect that she would love me back. And I would think that after 30 years of marriage that she loves me. Or maybe she's after my money. I don't know <laughs> which it is. But I would think that we have unconditional love for one another because when we wake up in the morning, she doesn't run to the bathroom and brush her teeth before she says good morning. She says, you ate garlic yesterday, didn't you? <laughs> Unconditional love to be straightforward about it. Turn your face just a little bit. You're breathing on me. Unconditional love. That's what unconditional love is, to give me a morning kiss regardless of what I ate for supper the night before. Aww. Unconditional love. What is unconditional love in a marriage? Don't have to get up and fix her hair? When her hair is smashed all to one side and got that pillow crease across her cheek? Unconditional love, you are so beautiful. Or did you bring me coffee? Whichever it is. Unconditional love. Right? Unconditional love. Look, the Lord says, do good, lend, treat them. You know, we've all heard the scripture, treat the other person the way you want to be treated. Right? Well, that's, Christ said that as well. The Word of God tells us to do these things, to have this unconditional love. Listen, unconditional love is the active choice to love no matter what. It is the active choice. I, I heard I T.D. Heard Jake say it like that, that it is the active choice. In other words, when God said to love your enemies, you know what he was saying there? He's saying it is possible for you to do it. It's a choice. God is not going to ask you to do something if you don't have the ability to do it. Amen. So when we, take, when we make that statement, I cannot love so and so. They don't deserve my love. You know what? You don't de deserve the love of Christ. Amen. I don't deserve the love of Christ, but he chose to love me anyway. Amen. In spite of who I am, in spite of the way that I act, in spite of the bad breath that I have in the morning, he still says, good morning, son. I love you. But what about us? What about us? We can use that, that sheepish excuse, but I'm not God. You're right, you're not. But he has given us the example. He has proven to us over and over, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're saying. Father, forgive them. They forgot to brush their teeth. Father, forgive them. He said, love just as I have loved. He was the example. He gave us the example of how to love. He could have said in the garden when Peter pulled out his sword and he cut the soldier's ear off. He could have said, you know what? He deserved that because I'm not guilty. He deserved to have his ear cut off. He could have done that. He could have said that. But the unconditional love of God says love anyway, regardless of what they say, regardless of what they do. I said that this is an act of choice because it's something that we have to learn to do. It, we, we don't just wake up one day learning to love unconditionally. It is something that we have to condition ourselves to do. I could, I could hold a grudge against every person that's ever talked ill about me. I could hold a grudge against every person that has said something wrong or bad on social media about Pastor Mike. I could hold all of those things against me. And I'm not persecuted near as much as some are. But I could still hold a grudge. But that's not the unconditional love of our Father. The unconditional love of God. What do I do with the unconditional? How do I deal with this unconditional love? 
I didn't have a whole great deal of a lot to say today because unconditional love answers for itself. I, I had probably, I literally had like three sheets of, of scriptures written down. There's no way I could have preached on 20 scriptures in the short amount of time that I have. Not that I have a time limit. But the unconditional love of God, according to John 13, 34, says, Love one another just as I have loved you. How much did God love me? Ask yourself that question. How much does God love you? How much did God love you? How much? How much did God love you? You need to have this conversation with your Heavenly Father. You need to ask Him, Father, how much do you love me? How much did you love me? And how much do you still love me? Because I can promise you that He's going to answer sort of like this. I have unconditional love for you. He doesn't say, well, you know what, son? Now, I know, look, there's, there's ifs in the Word. I'm not saying there's not. There's if you do this, I will do this. I know that. I understand that. I'm not trying to have a theological debate with anybody. But the very basic, the very basics of unconditional love. He said, I shed my blood while you were a sinner. So, is there a condition in that? I, I mean... Yeah, I know I need to come to Christ. But unconditional love. If you would have just done all the right things when you were in elementary school, I would have loved you just a little bit more. No, that's not what he says. If you would just treat your wife a little bit better, I would love you a little bit more. If you would just do a little bit more for your husband... That's me. If you would do just a little bit more, I would love you that little bit more. Unconditional love does not is not dictated by how much you do for me. Unconditional love, when we were standing at the altar, and I said, I'll love you through thick and thin. Whether you're rich or you're poor, I'm going to love you. And that's been the case. Because kind of like what the Apostle Paul said, I, I have had much and I've had little. We've had much, we've had little, but through it all, we've continued to love one another. And you know what? We didn't give up because we got into some little spat over who did the dishes or who didn't do the dishes or whether the grass got cut or didn't get cut or whether the kids got picked up from practice or didn't get picked up or whether or not I said I loved her enough times. We still didn't give up because unconditional love does not hold a record of wrongs. I got one amen out of that and maybe a couple of mm hmm <laughs> Unconditional love does not keep a record. Amen. Unconditional love does not hold a chart of this is everything you've done wrong to me, so until you get your act straight, I'm not loving you anymore. Unconditional love says I love you regardless. That is the love of God. Unconditional love. And I'm going to close with one verse of Scripture. In Ephesians chapter 4, unconditional love. What is this unconditional love? You say, you know, what is the answer to me not loving like God? Let me tell you what he says. Unconditional love. Unconditional love. According to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 2, we love with all humility, patience, bearing with one another in love. This is the agape love. This is the unselfish love. Love with all humility. So how do you love unconditionally? First, you've got to learn to humble yourself. It's very simple. You've got to learn to humble yourself. So we have to have humility. How many people here have abundant patience? Not me. There's times when I lose my cool. Not that I'm cool, 
But the Lord says that if you want patience, your faith is going to have to be tested. I find myself in the testing room quite often. Bearing with one another in unselfish love. Let me read to you what the Passion Translation of Ephesians 4.2 says. That we should always demonstrate gentleness and generous love. You see, that's what unconditional love of God is. It is generous love. It is an abundant love. He said, always demonstrate gentleness and generous love toward one another. Not just your spouse, but that co-worker. That co-worker that is so obnoxious you would like to slap them into last week. Love toward one another, especially toward those who may try your patience. Look, I didn't write it. I just wrote it down. Always demonstrate gentleness and generous love toward one another especially toward those who may try your patience. My wife can tell you that I try her patience. And there's times when she tries my patience. And I don't always pass that test. In fact, I fail it quite often. But unconditional love does not hold that against me. Look, we don't have an issue. I'm using her as an example this morning. We unconditionally love each other. But I think in that unconditional love, we have a lot to learn. And I think we all together have a lot to learn about the unconditional love of God. Because as people, we try to hold things. And I said this a moment ago. We try to hold things against people or against one another. And you might be thinking of someone right now that you have something against. Or maybe they have something against you. Jesus said, learn to love just like I loved you. He said, love everyone else just like I love you. He could have held, he could have held a grudge against those Roman soldiers that were beating him. Like I said a moment ago, he could have said, well, you know what? They don't deserve it. They don't deserve my love. I don't deserve his love. But his grace, his grace says that I have his love. I don't know where you're at in your life, sitting in this place right here, watching on the other side of that camera. I suggest that each and every one of us, including myself, go into the throne room of grace. Because in the throne room of grace, we can find the unconditional love of God. Whoever that person is, that situation, whatever it is that you're facing, I suggest that you go into the throne room of God where the mercy and the grace of God is found. I mean, it's not just there. It's everywhere. It's right here in this place. It's at this pulpit. It's, it's in these chairs. It's on the other side in that living room, wherever you're watching. Again, it's an act of choice. The unconditional love of God is an act of choice. It means that it's possible. He would have never said love like I love if it wasn't possible. It is possible. It is possible to crucify this old flesh, to lay it at the altar and say, God, remove this out of my life. I need you and I need your patience and I need your forgiveness and I need to learn how to forgive. I need to learn how to love unconditionally like you love. Father, right now, I just speak over this time. I speak over this word that's been shared. And Father, I ask you, Lord God, 
Lord, to transform me. Pastor Mike, transform me. Mold me. Lord, if I need to be put back on the potter's wheel, if I need to put, be put back in your hands and be made pliable, if I need to be remolded, if I need to be worked on, Father, I'm asking you, Lord, just like David said, turn your searchlight on me, O oh God, and see if there's any wicked way in me. If there's any unforgiveness in my life, Father, expose it to me where I can lay it at your altar this morning, where I can lay it at your feet right now. Some of you may be watching this on playback next week. Some of you might be watching this in 2021 or 2030 or whenever it is. You might be watching this and saying, you know what, I've been holding this grudge against this person in my life. I've been holding this grudge against this situation that took place, uh, maybe an employer or a former employer. God, I want to I wanna know the unconditional love of God. Lord, just like the song says, that you bankrupted heaven on my behalf. Father, I want to withdraw all of that hurt out of my life. I want to withdraw all that hate out of my life. I want to withdraw all of that unforgiveness out of my life. And I want to lay it at your feet and allow the blood of Jesus to make a new deposit. To make an overflowing deposit of unconditional love in my life. Father, if there's any person in this place that's never received Jesus as their Savior... We need to completely understand that every single person on this planet, every person ever born, every person that will be born, we have missed the mark. We've missed the mark. You said that we've all fallen short of your glory. But the free gift of God is unconditional love, salvation in Christ Jesus. You said that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. Father, if there's one person that is hearing this message today that has never received Jesus as their Savior, Father, I pray that they would say with their heart, not just their lips, but with their heart, say, Father, I need you. I need you as my Savior, and I make you my Savior. I accept that free gift of salvation that unconditional love the unconditional love of God that says that while we were yet sinners he, he died for us your word says that if we if we admit that in our life if we believe that in our heart if we make that confession not just with our lips but we make that confession with our heart Jesus is Savior. He is the Messiah. And we receive Him. He says we will be saved. Father, I give you praise today for your word and for what you're doing in this service. What you're going to continue to do, Father, as we trust you. Trust you to mold us. Trust you to change us. Trust you, Father, to give us the heart of the Father. In Ezekiel, you said that when you were speaking to the prophet about, about Israel, you said that you'll take that old stony heart out and you'll put a heart of flesh in, a heart of love, unconditional love, one that doesn't keep records. Father, I thank you. I thank you today for the unconditional love that you have for me the unconditional love that you have for a world. And I'm reminded, I, I, I'm just, I, it's like I can see when Christ was on that cross, he was surrounded by all sorts of different people. He was surrounded by his own kind, by the Jews that so trusted in the law. He said, I didn't come to do away with the law. I came to fulfill it. And he did. He was surrounded by, 
by Gentiles. He was surrounded by those that that hated him. He was surrounded by Pharisees. He was surrounded by Sadducees. He was surrounded by the by the religious sect of people. He was surrounded and ridiculed and beaten by even those that had nothing to do with with Jewish law. And he said, Father, forgive them. Just as he was saying then, he's saying today, in the year 2020, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. My blood is shed for them. I pray that you take this word today and don't just leave it at this service. Don't just leave it when this service goes offline. But hold it in your heart. Hold it in your heart and allow his word to grow and to multiply in your life. As we say, Father, teach me how to have unconditional love. It's not a one-time thing, but it's a continual growing. It's a continual watering. It's like the Apostle Paul said in Acts when he says that I'll water or I'll plant and Apollos waters, but God brings the increase. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you're bringing increase. Increase in my life. Increase in the lives of those here today. Increase in the lives of those that may be watching later on. Father, I praise you. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for the abundance of overflow that we experience every single day in our life. God, we give you the glory today. And I give you the praise in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Do you agree with that word today? His word says it will not return to him void. I pray that you receive this word today. He said in Matthew chapter 5, he says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. I pray that you are so hungry for God's word that today's message is not enough for you. But you're going to go home and you're going to open up the word of God and you're going to say, Father, teach me more about your unconditional love. I want to learn because I've got some unlovely people in my life and I need to love, I need to learn to love like you. I'm going to do the same thing. There's some people that I have to deal with in my life and I have to learn how to love like God loved. Preachers aren't exempt. I pray that you've received this today and I pray that you have a blessed day. And I pray that every person in this place has a blessed day. I pray that you leave out of this place more hungry than when you came. I know that doesn't sound right, but I've said it before. I pray that I have sparked a hunger in you that you go home and say, I need more of what I had today. I call you blessed in Jesus' name.